Hey guys, welcome back to another Division 2 video. In this one, we're actually going to be looking at some legendary builds. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of legendary lately, and I've taken the opportunity to basically just spy on what other people are using for their builds and legendary content. First, I just want to say, you know, thank you guys for, for watching this video. If you've, you know, been paying attention, you know, about two weeks ago, <laughs> things kind of got a little bit rough. The disconnects were just happening every freaking day for like a week. And that was driving me insane. Um, I ended up getting, you know, like a sore throat. Couldn't really make videos because I just didn't want to. Felt like, you know, felt like poop. And then, of course, I got some sort of weird eye infection thing. And that was terrible. I didn't want to look at the screen or anything. Then my, uh, <laughs> one of the blood vessels in my eye broke. And I was like, oh my god. Okay. So I ended up taking basically like the last two weeks off from actually trying to do any of this stuff. Because it's just been awful. But, uh, anyway into this video like I said we're gonna be looking at some legendary builds and I just want to get the premise across you know just so people understand what I'm doing like this is not a name and shame type event this is not a you know I, I'm so much better than you you guys are scrubs kind of thing I'm not trying to insult people I am looking at players builds I'm you know kind of giving you my opinion of them you know things that maybe I think are good or I think are bad and if I think the build's, you know, like, good, I'm going to tell you. If I think there's some improvements that can be made, I'm going to tell you. I'm not trying to completely recreate a build. I'm not trying to, like, say, like, oh, well, you know, what you're doing is stupid. Just use this build with this, this, and this, and this. What I'm going to try to do is look at the build, evaluate it, and suggest what pieces might be better where. I'm not trying to completely rewrite their build. I'm just trying to... Basically, just give give a little helpful hint of maybe this piece is better because of this. Or maybe this talent is better because this is what you're trying to do overall in the build. So I'm trying to keep what they want to accomplish with their build intact while just making it maybe a little bit better. Now to open this video up, what I actually want to do is look at a few of my builds and just kind of show you what I'm using. You know, so it doesn't seem like it's such a, a one-way thing. You know, it's not really a unique concept to have... A, something on your build that you want to improve or something that may be a little bit better in slot than what you currently use. It's not a unique concept. Anyone pretty much can benefit from that kind of advice. And honestly, most people probably already know, but there's the off chance that maybe you don't know. Maybe you're just, you know, using something because you think it is. So this is kind of just what I want to get into. So my first build is going to be just some random hardware that I put together. Now, the first thing that I notice is I'm using the technician, but I've already got six skill tier roles on there so what i would generally suggest is you either need to change something out for like armor so instead of using one skill tier on a piece you switch it to an armor roll that way you're getting that sixth skill tier from the technician and you also have an additional armor roll conversely what i would say is what i normally run on this build is actually the demolitionist because obviously hardwired is pretty much just the seeker spam build and I run the Demolitionist because you get that 10% explosive damage. Honestly, I don't even like Hardwired. <laughs> I really don't. Um, now, it's not that it's a bad um, gear set for this purpose. The reason I don't like it is because just, you know, like, if you see somebody using Hardwired, you can almost just assume that they're basically just using it as a cheese build. You know, they're kind of just aggroing enemies through walls or through doors you know they're throwing the the seeker mine underneath the door and you don't actually have to engage the enemies you don't have to actually fight anything and i hate that you know like i prefer going through a legendary um actually fighting the enemies rather than just cheesing it you know it's 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 annoying i mean look yeah it may be more dangerous and yes it may be more risky you know depending on the random group of players that you're with However, I would much rather just lose a legendary than sit at every legendary for like three extra hours while people try to like throw seekers into spots that they shouldn't be able to. You know, it's just, I mean, it take it can take like two hours. You know, I hate it. It's so aggravating and just, it, it ruins the content for me. So that's usually why I try to stay away from these kinds of builds. Not to say, you know, you can't use them if you're actually if you're actually staying with the group and actually playing normally and you're just using this kind of build, fantastic. But to me, it has a negative connotation of just cheesing content, and that's I don't like that. All right, 
Next build is actually my legendary shield build. Uh, I did some testing on this uh, a while ago, probably, you know, maybe even over a year ago. Gosh, I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, I'm basically just using, you know, uh, catharsis with a whole bunch of protection from elites, armor regen, you know, that kind of stuff. So this build is mostly just to uh, be a tank for the group, right? I mean, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I'm not trying to do anything, you know, special. Um, only thing I would say on this build specifically, you know, besides just maybe slightly better rolls, is that uh, my backpack you you know using the Uzina with a shield and the the sawed off I I do find it cumbersome right I'm getting the perfectly opportunistic which is great but not in every circumstance is that really that helpful and, and that's just because you know if you're trying to block certain enemies and trying to you know protect your team not every time can you actually guarantee that you're going to be getting perfectly opportunistic on the targets that people are actually shooting at right it can be a hassle like if you're just trying to block the rushers while you know your team is trying to focus on the medic or something like that it, it, you know it can be a little bit of an of an annoyance and so the one thing that i would say was with this build is kind of changing out uzina for you know just maybe a, a different brand and a different talent might be a little bit better like for example one of the things that i normally use is actually adrenaline rush now that allows me to get a little bit closer to the enemies and get that you know nice stack of bonus armor which Obviously, I'm protected from elites, but the purples and the reds are still going to be hitting me pretty hard. So that does provide me a little bit of extra tankiness and a little bit more protection to be able to actually stay out there. You know, again, don't want to be, you know, just all the way in the back fighting the enemies with, you know, no support from your team. But if your goal is to actually absorb as many bullets as you can in front of your team, you know, to support them that way, then, yeah, having as much tankiness on the build as possible is generally the best idea now of course one of the things i really like you know using when i'm playing with randoms is support builds yes i love playing support with random players because i think it i don't know it just feels a little bit more authentic to me because i like usually playing with randoms because generally speaking they're fresher players you know maybe they're trying to complete legendaries you know they don't really do them that often that kind of stuff Obviously, there are plenty of veterans who do legendaries, but I like to be able to support the newer players that are struggling through it and, you know, just kind of doing their own thing and figuring out the content for themselves without really telling them how to do it or mandating how they do it, that kind of stuff. So I like using support builds because it allows me to help them get through the content and I find that fun. Uh, however, with this build, I really can't say that I have any specific problems or changes that I would make to it. Now, you could obviously have your own preferences. Uh, I mean, I've got my one armor roll for my technician. I've got uh, a, a talent on my backpack that gives me a huge amount of skill repair. And since I'm a healer sitting in the back, usually I don't have to worry about being at full armor. I'm going to be at full armor pretty much all the time. Now, of course, yes, there are situations where that's not going to happen. But my healing is still pretty dang strong. And of course, with future initiative... It's even stronger when I'm, you know, running around with the group in front of me and stuff like that anyway. So I don't really have to worry about it too much. It just gives me a little bit extra. It allows me to save a little bit, you know, more of the charges on my hive than maybe I normally would. And of course, with the BTSU gloves, I get plenty of skill haste on the hive. So I can pretty much use it when I need to and even afford to waste it quite often. You know, I can destroy it and get basically, you know, all my charges back from the overcharge within a matter of seconds. So, and honestly, the only thing I, I think is maybe a quirk that some people might not like is that instead of having two healing skills, I've invested a little bit into some skill damage and I use the turret. Now the turret just allows me again to kind of support the team, to kind of, to, you know, follow in what they're doing, basically just to provide some extra damage. And of course it allows me to just throw out something that's going to absorb some extra damage from the enemies. As long as I actually pay attention to my hive enough, you know, I'm not going to be running out of the charges and, you know, my turret's going to be doing a good amount of damage for me. I mean, it's just a good way to keep my damage buff, keep my healing going fully procced and to provide support for the team in just all sorts of ways, right? So I can get a little bit of damage in there. I can buff that damage with my capacitor. I can heal the team really well, especially when I'm at full health or full armor. And it's just a good, solid support build that I really can't complain about. 
Now, the build that I've actually been using probably the most throughout a lot of these legendary runs is this striker build. Yeah, this is a backfire striker build with, you know, I got like 98% bleed resistance or something like that just because my mods aren't that great. But yes, backfire is the, an amazing SMG. I mean, it's actually pretty accurate and pretty stable, even though the accuracy doesn't really su suggest that it is. But the uh, ability to get 200% crit damage is pretty dang amazing. And I mean, when you put that with a striker, which has the ability to get 200% total weapon damage, I mean, that's a, that's a huge freaking buff. All right. I, I think compared to, you know, like, now this is just kind of a bit of my own personal math. It's not something that really might make sense to everyone else. But, um, you know, when you're looking at a lot of DPS builds and stuff like that, you're generally going to see somewhere in the realm of like, um, 1,200% to 1,600% uh, weapon damage equivalent, right? Like when you combine all the buffs, you're getting, you know, like a thousand plus extra damage over your, your base damage, kind of like that. When you put on the striker and the backfire, I mean, you're, you're getting close to like 2000% damage increase. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, look, I love it because I am able to put out some extreme heat on enemies. I mean, I can melt heavies pretty dang quick. And even if maybe, you know, it takes more than a clip to just completely drop them, obviously. But the fact that I can usually break an armor piece, break their uh, their ammo belt, break their backpack, uh, you know, this keeps them stunned and allows me to just drop them really easily, really quickly. I mean, it's not like it's a hugely original idea, right? I mean, this combination has been around for quite some time um, but I just find it to be incredibly effective against really tanky enemies it's really easy to build stacks especially on you know like the the warhounds or the tanks or the chungas I mean you can build stacks really easily um, you know yeah I've gotten into trouble thinking you know like all right I'm 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 the <laughs> I'm the boss in this mission and I'm just going to wipe through anything and then you know like the the random grenadier, you know, yellow shows up and it's like, nah, -uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's obviously got issues if you play it poorly, but you know, if you are just kind of taking your time, staying with your group, you know, not being incredibly overly aggressive just to build up stacks as fast as you can, you know, yeah, you, you can really end up wiping the floor with some enemies, especially if you, you know, have a patient team who is sitting in uh, like a smart position, just waiting for the enemies to come to you instead of like trying to rush out and every time you see an enemy and like, you know, bash them in the skull with a baseball bat. Yeah, y you can actually be tanky enough with, you know, the weak shield that you have to basically just pop out of cover, drop an enemy, hide back in cover. You know, it, it works well. And obviously you've got 10 seconds on your, uh, your backfire to maintain those stacks. And, you know, you've, you, I mean, you do have at least, I would say 20 to 30 seconds with your, uh, striker stacks to, to maintain them properly. So it's not too difficult to use. And I, I find it just, the damage is phenomenal. All right. So looking at the first build here, what we can see is obviously it's a, uh, a hybrid skill damage build, right? They've got the, uh, Picara holster and the ninja bike just to add in those extra, you know, weapon damage and armor core rolls and overall you know, not a bad build. Um, what I would suggest though, I mean, obviously you're using turret and drone and with turret and drone hybrid builds, the first thing that I would generally suggest getting rid of is skill haste. You're not going to really need it. I mean, yes, it might come in handy, but I mean, the difference between a 17 second cooldown and like a 20 second cooldown is, is marginal at best. So if you really wanted to go into more of the hybrid style, I would suggest, you know, changing out skill haste for like crit damage or crit chance, stuff like that. Overall, I would just say that the benefits of that would just, you know, just kind of outweigh the fact that you're gaining a couple seconds on your cooldown. So, I mean, yeah, again, 17 seconds versus like 20, 21 seconds. It's not really that big of a deal considering you could possibly be gaining like 10% extra crit chances, which is going to put you at like 59% and you're going to be gaining you know, like 36% crit damage. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not a bad amount of damage there for your weapon. So highly beneficial for you. And, you know, only thing you're really losing is skill haste, which isn't really that important. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that for this kind of build specifically, 
it seems like that would be a better route to go with. All right, next up we've got a Ninja Bike Rigger Empress Center National build. Okay, um, Kinetic Momentum, of course, I, I like that talent. Uh, it's very good and very easy to use with the turret and drone combo. The uh, real issue that I see here is I don't really like Rigger. Um, yeah, like for me, Rigger is more useful especially if you have the backpack because you use the backpack and then you're able to all of a sudden spam a lot of different skills that maybe you wouldn't normally use. Obviously, you know, you can use, you know, turrets and drones just fine. Um, but I would say with rigor, you know, you get to use like the incinerator turret or the fire turret, whatever the heck that thing's called. Um, that works pretty well. I mean, the, the turret itself isn't that great, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, you can use it with the traps, like the shock trap or the explosive trap. You, know, you can spam those over and over and throw them, cancel them, throw them, you cancel them, throw them, you cancel them. You can, you can get a lot of damage. It's kind of like, it's, it's almost like the hardware copycat kind of build, except for different skills. But honestly, for this kind of build, I, I'm not really sure if I like it. Um, it's been a while since I've tested out Rigger to know exactly what kind of bonus damage that it gives to the turret and drone. So I, before I would comment on like, well, you should probably just use this and this, I would say like, I would need to actually test out Rigger again to just see if it's like a total skill damage or if it's really just like you know 25 percent skill damage because if it is then yeah i'd probably just use different pieces considering you're using the ninja uh it wouldn't make much sense to me i mean because you're not really getting much out of skill haste and skill duration anyway so that's that's something that i would kind of like eh, i don't really see the point in using that now besides that obviously i you know uh, the whole point of this is not to totally completely change their build and basically you know erase all of the you know the, whatever they're using um so the minor change that i would of course su suggest to this build is since you are using the ninja anyway you do already have six uh skill tiers right and you're using the technician so obviously changing one of those rigor pieces to just an armor core is probably just going to be the easiest you know that way you've got two armor cores and you still have your six uh, skill tiers and all right, we're looking at our third skill build here uh, using that alternating current, which, you know, obviously it's, it's not that bad. Now, I know there's some people that don't like the exotic holster. Um, honestly, if it was like a, a chest piece or like a backpack, yeah, I would say it was probably kind of trash, uh, but it's a holster. So you get to keep your, you know, your chest talent and your your uh, backpack talent, and it's just adding extra damage to the skills that you're using. It's not, it's, it's not, not bad, right? It's probably going to be better than like a 10% uh, skill damage piece, right? So I don't personally have a problem with it. Now, are there other builds that don't use it and are better? Yeah, there are. But we're going off of what this build is. Now, it looks like, again, this is kind of just like a, they're trying to go a little bit hybrid, but not really enough. Uh, but honestly, overall, what I'd say is the build seems fine. I would probably personally invest in a little bit more crit chance, crit damage with this kind of thing. Um, I, I wouldn't say that the Murakami chest piece is a, is a great piece. Obviously, it's only adding like skill duration, which really isn't important unless you're a healer, right? It's, you know, the only time that I ever find skill duration to be useful again is if you are a healer build using the chem launcher. So that just extends the the duration of that heal on the ground, which means that you have to use less healing, you know? So like, yeah, it, it preserves the amount of, of chem launcher charges that you have. You don't have to spam them over and over again. For any other build, you know, if you're trying to make a hybrid, uh, you know, skill damage build, if you're trying to make a status effect build, I mean, I just don't like the Marikami. You know, maybe if you get the name piece with the, the armor uh, regen, like the 1% armor regen roll and yeah. Um, emperor's guard is that what they're called i don't remember anyway if you're, if you're using those knee pads for like an armor regen skill build sure if you're not then i really don't see the point of using murakami for anything other than like healing builds and so honestly the biggest thing that i would say about this build is just getting rid of the murakami because it really doesn't make much sense outside of a healer build and you're not really going to get too much out of that skill duration for pretty much any skill that you're really going to use and now while I would say, you know, get rid of some skill haste for this kind of build, you are using the hive. The hive can benefit from skill haste because obviously it has so many charges in it. And if you throw it out there and lose all the charges, yeah, it can take a fairly decent time to get that skill back. Um, so the closer you have it to like one second cooldown, 
the better. But besides that, obviously, you know, again, we're in the, the six skill tier situation here on the armor. Just makes sense to just roll one of those into armor or, you know, uh, weapon damage. And again, that's just a pretty easy thing to accomplish. Uh, you know, it's, it's not really that hard to farm a, a piece of gear that has, you know, like skill damage, skill haste, or skill damage status effects as a native yellow roll, and then just being able to change the, the uh, skill tier to armor or weapon damage. But yeah, overall, this is going to be a skill build that's still dealing plenty of damage. All right, and then we've got another hardwired here. This one's got, obviously, uh, China Light and the Grupo, okay, and the Ninja Bike. And obviously, we're going for hardwired with the uh, explosive damage. Now, the only issue that I see with this build is, again, you know, using hardwired, it's designed for one purpose, and that's to spam <laughs> the Cluster Seeker Mine. That's it's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do anything else with it. But by using the Ninja Bike, of course, we are now changing that 10-second spam to, like, a 20-second spam. So they're not using the Cluster Seeker. They're using, it looks like, the Turret and the, the Explosive Seeker, which, again, not sure this looks like it's probably again before another boss fight so they might have changed out their skills so again i can't tell you 100 percent what they're doing my my assumption is that they probably normally use the artillery turret which is great because that's going to give them obviously the biggest advantage in terms of the damage and they're going to you know throw out the seeker and, and get lots of damage that way now of course that raises the question if the chest piece talent is really the best way to go Personally, if you didn't want to use, like, obviously, you know, a lot of people don't want to use glass cannon. Um, a lot of people, maybe if they're using, like, a, a, a seeker mine, you know, it's probably not best to use, like, kinetic momentum. It's just, it's not going to give you a huge buff. So, overall, if, if I was to run this build, I would probably use more of a team buff um, for my chest piece. So, I would probably switch out my mask. Um, so my mask would be hardwired and I'd probably try to get a China light chest piece that was rolled with, uh, that talent that gives you like the 12%, uh, skill damage and weapon damage when you're in cover, because obviously that's just going to give you extra weapon damage. Cause you're going to be building those capacitor stacks. It's going to give you extra skill damage since you're using skills. That's great. And it's also going to give your team, which is obviously if you're playing in legendary in a team is going to be helpful. And this is, you know, obviously not a stand out in the open and, you know, just kind of face tank enemies kind of build, you're probably going to be spending a lot of time in cover. That would probably be my decision, but maybe they've tested it out and found out that for them, you know, the hardware chess piece, giving them that 15% extra skill damage is just better than any of the other options. I mean, that's entirely possible. All right, and here we've got another hardware build. This time we're using two pieces of Hanayu for skill haste and skill damage. Of course, obviously this is going to be a full on seeker spam build. Um, now, obviously, the first thing that sticks out to me is that, you know, we're using Unbreakable, and we've got one random protection from Elite's mod on. Uh, I mean, you know, do what you want. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it seems a little bit weird. Um, overall, I understand that, you know, we, yeah, it's, it makes you a little bit tankier, but you're not a tank build. It, I really don't see that Unbreakable is really that great. So I would probably just, you know, just invest into an actual skill damage talent for this kind of build. I mean, I would probably just go personally with Wyvern Wear and China Light. That's going to give you the explosive damage and the skill damage. And that's basically what you're going for anyway. I mean, for the most part, you don't really need that 10% skill haste. And you, you need two pieces to give you the skill damage. So, I mean, obviously the Wyvern Wear is going to give you the skill damage right off the bat. And that China Light is going to give you that 15% explosive damage, which is a lot better. All right, we've got another skill build here. We've got a hardwired with the btsu gloves and the china knee pads obviously i think this build is fine a uh, weapon choice seems a little bit odd for me personally um i don't know why you'd want to use the bullet king in this i yeah I don't, that i don't understand and now it looks like this is probably before a, a boss or maybe the final boss or something like that because I, I would assume that they're probably not using the turret regularly probably more of like a cluster seeker kind of thing so they're probably just throwing the uh, turret up there just to get some damage or something like that. Um, so I would assume that it's probably Hive and Seeker Mine kind of thing, which obviously makes sense. Um, I do like that they're actually using the Survivalist Specialization. That's because they're 
it looks like obviously intending to use the stinger to apply status effects. And then of course that's going to give your team 10% extra damage to status affected targets. So that's good. Um, it's, it's actually like, you know, a little bit of team thinking there. Now, overall, honestly, I wouldn't say that there's anything I would really change. Uh, you know, like I just said with the last build, maybe putting the China light on the chest piece would probably be, you know, more of a direction that I would go just get a a more team oriented talent or maybe just a more damage oriented talent because look at the end of the day this is not a build for taking damage it's a build for dealing damage so you know maybe putting the last cannon on there because you're going to be sitting in the back anyway uh, or maybe you know putting something else to help your team while you sit in cover that could be a better option but if that's not what you're going to be doing if you're going to be standing in a doorway or, or in a hallway without cover, just kind of spamming the seekers, then I think that that talent probably doesn't make sense. But again, it depends on how you actually play the build. All right, moving into the first Eclipse Protocol build that I saw. Uh, obviously, standard, we've got the Vile Mask, we've got the you know four pieces of Eclipse, and we've got uh, Americami Gloves. Obviously, the Americami Gloves are a little off. It looks like uh, this is obviously a low shade level player, so I'm not going to be, you know, too critical on this because obviously they're probably making do with whatever they have now like blue screen is not a bad weapon if you're actually using it for what you need it for and there's plenty of different uh, i guess replacements for the uh, capacitor so i mean like yeah you could you could argue whether they should use the capacitor or the blue screen um but either way i think that's that's perfectly fine uh my main thing would be i think they're confusing uh skill duration with status effects that's probably why they've got the marikami gloves i mean it could be wrong i'm gonna just be the best gloves they've got currently uh, but what i would say is a lot of people especially that are new to the game kind of confuse skill duration with the duration that a status effect is going to last that's generally not the case um it, it sounds like it should be how it works um skill duration should i think affect how long a status effect lasts um, maybe it doesn't increase the damage of a status effect but increasing the duration would make sense now, it's been a while since I actually tested that, you know, personally, uh, probably back to like, you know, the launch of Warlords of New York, kind of. So it's entirely possible that the devs have changed something that I'm unaware of. But generally speaking, duration is not going to affect the, the actual uh, duration of your status effects. So I would say that, you know, having a single piece of something else in there is going to be better. So honestly, I would just suggest changing out those gloves for Probably, you know, anything. Anything you can get a skill tier on with status effect and, and skill haste or status effect, skill damage, you know, whatever. Uh, I mean, you could go with, like, Bellstone for some regen. You could go with, uh, I guess, Wyvernware for some skill damage. You could go with Hanayu for a little bit more skill haste. Uh, and I think, I'm trying to think of the one, um, it's like Golan has the 10% status effect. If you can manage to get a piece there with a, uh, you know, the good rolls that you want, status effect and skill haste or skill damage or whatever, and then roll the armor to skill tier. I think that'd probably be the best choice for this build. But besides that, for this person, I think it's just a matter of getting more shade levels and just getting, you know, a little bit better rolls on your pieces. But yeah, this is just a fairly standard um, Eclipse Protocol build. So I, I can't really say that anything's uh, bad with it. But yeah, I, I do like Eclipse Protocol with the gunner specialization for that confuse. I mean, it's, it's good. Obviously, on, on Legendary, they took the fire out of it, so it's not as good as it was originally. But again, it's a nice thing to have, especially if you're playing with a team, you know, being able to just, you know, stun any of the enemies, you know, even for a brief second just to, you know, get them to stop so you can just open fire on them. Either way, pretty good standard uh, status effect build. And then, of course, we've got another uh, status effect build here with Eclipse. Now they're using the, uh, the named backpack for that uh, perfect creeping death which is fine. Um, that's going to work out when they're applying status effects. As long as you're not using damage-based status effects, like you're using something more along the lines of like confuse or blind or something like that, or even the EMP stuff, that's going to be, that's going to be great. It's going to work out pretty well for you. But however, if you are using like more of a damage-based kind of skill, I would probably go with the, the backpack for Eclipse Protocol, just because that, you know, that is providing you like 30% amplified damage to status effect at target. So it, I mean, it obviously just depends on how you want to play. But uh, overall, I think, you know, they've got the goal on gear knee pads, which is going to work because obviously that's that's the way you want to roll them for a build like this. And they're, you know, they're using the uh, survivalist specialization for that extra damage to status effective targets. But overall, it's not a bad build. And all right, here we go. we got another skill build. I actually like this one. Um, using the three-piece Empress, two-piece Brazos, and a Wyvernware. 
Now this gives you two armor tiers. You get uh, epic, extra weapon damage, and you know you're keeping all your talents in there instead of like you, you know a lot of times you'd see this kind of thing with like a ninja bike. Uh, this allows you to just basically keep all the buffs and the talents, which are going to give you much better results than just you know uh, doubling up on some of your uh, your brand set bonuses. So this is actually something I would consider to be a pretty solid build here. Um, again, we're using the the unbreakable though on your chest piece. And honestly, I get why people use it because they think, you know, like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to die. But honestly, in Legendary, like, they blow through your armor so quick anyway. Like, if you're not really a full tank build, it really doesn't seem to make too much sense to me. You know, and I get why people use it because it's like, well, I'm being hit with explosives. And, you know, if I get hit with two, then I'm going to be dropped. And, you know, as long as I have Unbreakable, then I can at least, you know, survive more explosions. But like, then, you know, what I kind of say is like, yeah, but you've played legendary before right like you don't just if you don't get out of the way you don't just get hit by one or two explosives like you, you just keep getting hit by explosive after explosive so like the amount of times the, the you know like the drone operators have just spammed those stupid drones and sent them at you like it's you know like wearing unbreakables just like well i just i, I died a second later you know it's like so you know like from that perspective i just i don't really understand why people would find unbreakable extremely valuable like if you are you know full protection from elites full tank build you know like you're investing all into survivability and your goal is just to stand in front of your team and tank bullets like okay unbreakable could be a, a talent you use but like on legendary you know that it's quote unquote like a second chance it's, it's just i don't know it's just, you're just too squishy period you know like it's, it's not something that i would personally want to really utilize because then you know once it breaks anyway what are you going to do are you going to sit and cover for like 60 seconds until it comes back you know that's so it's kind of like i don't know I don't, I don't know if i'd really want to use it i'd probably just rather just put on a healing skill and, and suck it up but anyway besides for my personal preference on unbreakable and and you know squishy skill builds i would say that you know it's a good build all right and finally we're getting into some tankier builds here now this is obviously we're looking at a foundry bulwark build um off the bat my you know obviously yeah you know, i don't when you're looking at a foundry bulwark build i don't look at the you know the two the primary weapons like the first and second uh i just look at the pistol obviously great pistol uh, i'm assuming this is again before a boss encounter because he doesn't have the shield equipped <laughs> so obviously that would like if, if it was like this was what he was using at the beginning of the mission i'd be like what the f um wouldn't make any sense but obviously i would assume that they're probably not using the shield because they switched to the turret just to throw it over the freaking uh, uh, barrier or something like that. So with that out of the way, what I would say is that uh, my my main focus would be that 511. Like, I mean, it's 511, bro. Uh, you 10% health. Uh, yeah, get rid of that. Um, get something else. Um, anything else. Uh, like, honestly, uh, go with, what was it, Bellstone? Get that uh, armor regen or go with another piece for, you know, like... Uh, more armor i don't know I, I can't remember all the pieces right now and the second thing i'm gonna say is okay look I, I know you're using the shield and you know perfect vanguard sounds like a great option but let's just kind of really consider this if you are in a well-oiled group and you are you know know exactly when to proc things and you know when your team needs that bonus armor to make like a dangerous run like in the mortisova fight or something like that you know the, the raid right if you know when to proc it it can be hugely beneficial right if you're at the end of the roosevelt island and you see the uh, you know the drone getting ready to launch the rockets and you know when to proc it fantastic but think of the way that most tank builds are going to play a shield they're going to have the shield out they're going to stand there and get shot very rarely are they going to actually undo the shield pop it back out to activate the talent so like this kind of talent you know like if you're being shot at you're not going to drop the shield to just proc this talent again you're probably going to keep this shield out for a long time and you're not going to get full use out of this talent i'm not saying i'm not saying it's impossible i'm not saying somebody couldn't do it but i'm just saying generally speaking as a tank build from my personal experience i'm not going to constantly be flipping flopping this you know shield while i'm in the middle of a battle um so that reduces its effectiveness for me personally so i would probably say Honestly, it would probably just be better just to use the tardigrade chest piece, right? I, I, you're at 4,000 shade. Uh, there's probably, you know, you have probably have a tardigrade chest piece, right? And the benefit of that is it's going to actually give you your team the buff when they need it. So, 
you know, instead of you, you know, just kind of randomly flipping on and off of the shield and giving the buff, they're going to always have the benefit of, you know, they're, they're always going to have that, that safety net there of tardigrade going off when they need it. So that's something that I would consider doing, but honestly, it's a foundry bulwark build. So un unless you're doing something really crazy, yeah, I mean, it's just going to work. It's going to be a good tanking build for legendary content. Now, we really wouldn't call this a tanking build per se, but of course, we've got the six armor rolls and we're using a shield. So, I mean, like we've got a tier six shield. We've got a bunch of armor. Um, we're using the three-piece striker with two pieces of Hunter's Fury and the ninja bike. Okay, you know, you guys know how I feel about the ninja bike. Now, honestly, what I would say is I don't really like or appreciate this combination too much. Now, I get what they're going for, right? They're building stacks with Striker, and then they're, you know, getting kills and basically just replenishing their armor or replenishing their health with Hunter's Fury. That's fine. But let's be honest here. Will a single kill give you enough armor and health to ignore a Chunga or ignore a, a you know, a Warhound or something like that that's just, like, effing you up? No, it's not. Um, usually Hunter's Fury is, is good for heroic content. You can kind of just like blow through it real quick, but in legendary, I think they're doing just a lot of damage to you. That kind of mitigates just any return that you get from like 20% armor on kill. I'm not saying it's terrible. Um, if you play cautious, you know, it, it can be great, but I mean, again, look, you're, you're a non DPS build. You're, you know, investing very little into actual weapon damage. And so it's going to be tougher for you to actually get these kills um, to really proc, you know, getting armor on kill. I'm not saying you can't do it, but like if there was a better DPS player on the team, they're probably going to be getting a lot more of the kills than you are. So it really just kind of depends. I mean, it's always good to have somebody who's a little bit tankier and, you know, not dying readily. So this could be a, a good build for a team. Um, but at the same time, you would have to realize that yeah, you're, you're kind of not getting peak performance out of Hunter's Fury, especially in a difficulty that's extra tanky, right? So you're not getting the kills as often as you'd probably like to really benefit from that armor on kill. Uh, maybe it might just be better just to run like, you know, two pieces of armor regen and armor on kill, you know, just high-end pieces. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't want to tell people not to run something because, you know, you can run it. Uh, I just find that overall armor on kill, health on kill stuff and legendary content isn't really as beneficial as people want it to be. It's, it can be, it's great on like, you know, the easy difficulty stuff where you can just blow through enemies and, you know, like literally get five kills in a matter of like three seconds. Sure. Fantastic. Works great you know, being at full armor in three seconds. Legendary, without much damage, look, this is all, pretty much all armor, and then you're going to try to get, you know, like the kills after kill after kill after kill. I don't know. It just seems like to me that it wouldn't be as beneficial as, you know, you'd kind of look at it and be like, oh man, this is going to be really good. Yeah, you're going to get the striker buff, but you're still not really going to be doing too much damage to, so overall, that would be just my main concern, just the Hunter Sphere. I'm not sure exactly if that's the best option for you, but it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be terrible, I guess I would say. Now, this person actually also switched to a variation of this build during the mission, and it was kind of, you know, the same, uh, except this one I would consider a little bit more odd. Instead of the Hunter's Fury, they went with Brazos and Heartbreaker. So this was basically just giving them a little bit extra, you know, AR and LMG damage and... Again, you know, the Brazos, we all know what that does. Uh, the thing that kind of threw me for the loop was the, the Stoner LMG. Uh, I was I'm like, okay, but why? You know, like, I, I was a little bit confused by this because, I mean, I get what the, the LMG does. But at the same time, the whole point of using Striker is obviously, one, fast firing weapons, and two, hitting the enemy. And if you're, like, forcing them into cover, then you're not hitting the enemy and you're not building stacks. So it kind of seems like... Uh, a build that works against itself. That's really what I was thinking when I saw it. Obviously, if you changed out the, the Stoner LMG and put something else in there, it'd probably be, you know, just absolutely fine. Um, again, I, I'm not sure if I'd go with Heartbreaker for the One Piece. Just, you know, uh, if I was going with anything, you know, I'd probably just go with like Fenris and get the reload speed or 
go with heck uh, the the fox's burn he pass just get that auto cover damage because it's going to be better period uh, but anyway um yeah i'm just a little bit confused by that stoner lmg thing all right in the next build we got a catharsis heartbreaker with fox's prayer um overall i don't see any problems with this i mean obviously it looks like it's going to work i mean people love heartbreaker that's great for that bonus armor but honestly my initial impression is more like this is a shield build that they don't want to use a shield build with and that's going to just kind of hurt the build uh because obviously you know catharsis it requires 30 stacks before you drop a healing right and really the only way you're going to build 30 stacks without uh just being killed <laughs> to actually heal back up is if you are you know being shot by like the the machine gun warhound that's pretty much the only way that's you know that's pretty much the only enemy that's going to shoot you with enough bullets and do uh, i guess less damage to you so if anything else is hitting you or if you're getting you know hit by like explosive drones this is probably a little bit you know like kind of like false sense of security kind of thing um so honestly my, my opinion would be like you know you don't really have that much skill tier on this build you know you've only got one skill tier uh using the defender drone isn't going to make much sense so just switch to the shield because it's going to be tier six and it's going to work better that's pretty much it okay and moving into another tanky build this is obviously you know like looking at it it looks like it's probably one of the best setups personally for you know me personally um got the catharsis you've got you know four pieces of foundry bulwark including the chest in the background i mean this is going to be a super tanky build i mean they're using the uh deflector shield or what uh, whatever that thing's called anyway they're using the uh the shield that bounces the bullets back <laughs> um and of course they're using obviously the artificer so they're healing themselves shields healing them they're healing the shield it, it's it's all a good circle um this is just basically one of the general tankiest builds you can make uh, red flags that i see one you know you got the capacitor i don't understand why you got the capacitor your pistol yeah i don't like that pistol um uh, i would say yeah you need to get a better pistol um the uh let's see but honestly my biggest critique is probably just going to be your mods you've got armor on kill and incoming repair for this build that doesn't make any sense legendary doesn't make any sense uh, i'm not saying you know you can't get any bonus out of uh, incoming repair right you, you can uh armor on kill mazo on a tank build that's kind of useless you're not going to be getting that many kills right you're just not even with the shield you're not going to be killing that much uh your incoming repairs you're probably thinking that it's going to be working with your build it doesn't it does not boost your uh, catharsis mask and it is not boosting the healing you're getting from foundry bulwark Incoming repairs only works with skill healing on you. So it's not boosting the, the repair from your artifice or your shield either. So it, those are wasted slots. Um, so honestly, I would just say go with protection from elites. So overall, my, my general opinion would be, yeah, get some better mod, get a better pistol, and possibly change out your knee pads to maybe like armor regen ones. Um, the 5% armor, I mean, it's fine. It's not It's not bad but i think overall the armor regen you know one percent armor regen is going to be a little bit better for the build than five percent armor all right moving into the damage builds we've got a striker with coyote and fox's prayer um overall i say looks fine to me um your g36 is a bit of a, a red flag to me <laughs> um i say this because look i mean obviously this is a pretty simple build you see you know it's striker dps build you generally don't want to use strain on a weapon that fires fast and you don't want to use strain on a gear set that boosts the rpm of your weapon so like striker boosts your your rpm and you're you know using a talent that depends on firing for a longer period of time i mean look strained is great for slow firing smgs and slow firing ars and lmgs it's not really great for fast firing weapons and that's just because you're going to be done with your magazine pretty much in like three seconds maybe even two depending on the weapon and that means that you by the end of your weapon you've only built 20 percent crit hit damage uh that's you know that's that's not very beneficial to your build because obviously you know at the very end you get the 20 percent but the entire time you were firing that like first half you got zero and then you got 10 and then by the very end you got you know 20 percent so it doesn't work on fast firing weapons. Uh, the G36 is obviously not the fastest firing weapon, but I would still put it in the category of too fast for strained. 
Oh, we're kind of moving into a little bit of a DPS tanky combo, obviously more focused on the DPS. Um, low shade level, so I'm not going to be, you know, like uh, critiquing this hard as far as the rolls go. Um, overall, I can understand it could be a good setup. Uh, you've got, obviously, the catharsis for repair. You've got, you know, your striker for damage. And then, of course, you've got your bellstone, again, for a little bit of additional armor regen. All understandable and good. Now, I get why people use, like, the rate of fire buff on striker with the pestilence but using a four piece for striker and running the pestilence i honestly i just don't really understand it it doesn't doesn't work very well um the biggest reason is because your striker buff does not buff your pestilence stacks so while you're building striker stacks or i guess i would say with pestilence while you're losing striker stacks um yeah, I don't even, like, I mean, unless you literally hit every shot with the Pestilence, like, from up close, you're probably not going to be able to build stacks with it, uh, especially, like, much, much past 100, right? So you'd have to switch to your, it looks like a Banshee, maybe, I don't know, whatever that thing's called. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to build stacks with your SMG, switch to the Pestilence, then build, st I don't know, it just seems messy, I would probably just avoid the Pestilence altogether, but, you know, if this is the best you got, since you are such a low shade level, I mean, rock it, but know that it's really not a great combination. All right, we got a uh, four-piece hotshot ninja bike uh, sniper build. Um, not something I see too often in legendary group missions. Uh, obviously, you know, headhunter, sniper rifle builds, headhunter pretty much anything pistol bill like they work i mean you can you can cheese the ever loving crap out of most content with you know headhunter builds and they work perfectly fine uh, i personally i don't find them to be very fun for me so i don't really like to use them very much in legendary um if really at all i actually kind of just avoid using them but overall it looks like a solid build you got you know headshot damage you got marksman rifle damage you got damage to armor weapon damage i mean if you are using a sniper rifle with a damage build and headhunter, it's going to work. It's going to one-shot pretty much everything in the game. So, yeah, it's not really like a, a sin to be using, you know, a, a slightly tankier backpack and ignoring the talent. I mean, you're still going to be doing 1,200% damage to enemies with headshots. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be... This is going to be a perfectly usable sniper build. You're going to be doing enough damage to one-shot everything. And honestly, like I could say, like, well, you might want to use this one or use this one. But uh, at the same time, like, you're already one-shotting everything. Does it even matter? You know, so uh, I would just say, like, if if you're using it and you, you like it, that works fantastic. All right, and the next build, uh, my initial impression is kind of like, is this like a cheese farmer? you know, shade 3000. Like, so like, I'm, I'm wondering like, is this a cheese farmer? Yeah. That's my, that's my initial impression. Um, why do you have, you know, like skill haste on your chest piece? Uh, you've got really terrible armor on your gloves. Um, you've got, you've got explosive resistance on your holster. Like it just seems so inconsistent. Right. Um, and I mean, I guess the, the biggest thing that annoys me with this build would just be like, okay, so you Xena obviously comes with armor right? And what else comes with armor? Well, you've got Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker normally comes with armor. So it would have made much more sense to me to change out the uh, skill haste on Yuzina for like crit chance and then change another piece of Heartbreaker from armor to weapon damage. It would have been a much easier change and it would have made your, your Yuzina piece much more usable for many more builds than just changing it to weapon damage and keeping skill haste on there. So I would say that was a bad decision to roll that. Overall, what I would say with you know this build is my impression is that it's kind of like a sloppy test build. It's not finished. It was something that they you know went into legendary and uh, forced their their teammates to endure. Um, this is kind of the thing that you, like if you're gonna test out something in legendary, do it solo. Test that by yourself. That's generally how you should do it. Like, uh, you're not trying to beat Legendary, you're trying to see if it works, and if you like it or not. If you, you know, like, you can't drop a red bar before you get destroyed, then it's probably a terrible build, right? If you can't take out one enemy just aggroing the, the, the group in Legendary, then it's probably a terrible build. Alright, almost at the end here, uh, we got another build, and this looks like, obviously, we've got Vile Mask, we've got the Habsburg, and we've got some Brazos. Um, 
overall, I kind of, I'm liking this build and I'm not liking this build. What I would say is I like about the build is it's one of those, you know, kind of like funky concept builds that I, you know, I, I wish would work better, right? You know, you got status effects, you got some armor regen, you got weapon damage, and, you know, you're, you're trying to kind of get the best of all worlds, right? You're trying to get some, you're, you're doing the status effects to stop the enemy. You're getting armor regen so you don't have to, you know, like uh, constantly hide all the time. You can at least, you know, regen some of your armor. And of course, you're going with, you know, a little bit of weapon damage so you can actually deal some damage. And of course, you know, you got headshot damage because it's better than crit chance or crit damage would be on this specific build. So that works. Now, my problem with this is that you're obviously using Sadist um, because you're bleeding the enemies. But sadist is only active when your targets are bleeding and you can only apply bleed for like 20 seconds and you know that bleed is only going to last for a very short amount of time so you're getting maybe your buff like a quarter of the time right and unless you're you know just constantly using your shotgun as your main weapon um so really i'm seeing an issue just that you're you know the sadist isn't going to work very well very often at all so it doesn't even make sense to use that. I mean, look, you should probably, honestly, uh, just use a, a different talent on your on your weapon. Uh, that would give you more damage. It just would. So if I was to keep this build exactly as it is um, and just change some things around, I'd say the talent on your weapon, uh, removing Sadist and getting something that's going to be longer lasting, more effective throughout an entire fight rather than like maybe a quarter of the fight, uh, that would be a better option. And honestly 20% magazine size is probably not doing that much for the build honestly um I would say that it'd probably just be better just to use a, a different brand set that's either giving you like you know armor regen or maybe some shotgun damage and something as simple as going with Fox's Prayer could just increase the amount of damage that you're going to be dealing with this build overall um it, obviously it's up to you you know goal on gear Fox's Prayer um Bellstone I mean those are just a couple options that could substantially increase you know what your build is trying to accomplish um more than i think magazine size you know magazine size seems a little bit like of an odd choice and saving the best for last a build that i truly struggle to understand um we've got capacitor ninja bike night watcher mask three piece uh, or i guess i should say four piece of foundry bulwark with an additional gilla holster now, the rolls on it, on this build, are bad, right? The rolls are bad, and I'm not going to, you know, spend too much time focusing on the fact that they are bad. Instead, I'm going to focus on the three main things that kind of just didn't make any sense to me. All right, so one, why are we using the capacitor? We obviously do not have any real skill tier on this build. We've got one skill tier. That is it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it obviously does not appear to be a skill damage build, right? So again, why do we have the capacitor? Uh, the second thing is, why do we have the Night Watcher? Like this is a tank build and you're running a, a scanner pulse mask. I mean, this is a, a tank build and you've got a mask that is giving you 100% scanner pulse haste. Now, that in itself doesn't make any sense. Like, I mean, why would you run a pulse on a tank build, right? But then you're not even running the scanner pulse on the build. That's just, I think we all know what that is. And then the third thing that I would just say just overall is, uh, okay, obviously, look, you know, total armor and armor regen, that's fine. Like, I, I don't have any problem with that. But we're using the Ninja Bike. So by using two pieces of the same brand set, we are losing one potential roll. But then by using Gila, we're also getting health. It's not exactly something that I would want to have. I mean, I, honestly, if we went with like Bellstone and Uzina, we would just probably just be happier with that. Or we could go with like Bellstone and Golan. Uh, I mean, there, there's other options, better combinations besides two Gila to put in here and if you were to use any named piece here like a named gilla i would say like the, the obvious choice should have been to go with like a, a chill out mask 
but yeah, overall, my opinion would be this is just a, a bad, sloppy build. Like the the mask doesn't make any sense. The holster doesn't really help the mask situation. Um, your mods, okay. I mean, you got some skill repair, but then you also got a red mod on your backpack, which I mean, you it doesn't make any sense there. Um, your your weapon choice, you know, at least for your capacitor, doesn't make any sense. The survivalist specialization, uh, I'm pretty sure there'd be a better choice for this build. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you you got determined on your you're not even doing any damage what is determined gonna do i yeah i just i don't understand this build it is a very very bad build that i do not expect somebody who's like you know overshade a thousand to be putting on i'll just say it like that this is this one was rough um and i distinctly remember we did not complete this legendary Again, this is not a name and shame thing, but this is just a really bad build. And I distinctly remember looking at this build when I looked at this build. And I remember, yeah, we did not even come close to getting through that legendary mission. No, no, we did not. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that was the final build. Uh, that one was that one was rough. Um, overall, I do see in legendary, you know, most of the, most of the builds are pretty good, pretty coherent. Um, a lot of the players are pretty decent and, and legendary. Uh, of course, you do get, you know, sometimes you get the two outliers that I absolutely hate. Uh, you get the outlier where players have no idea what they're doing. Um, they think they're Rambo and they're just going to go run out there and get themselves killed away from the group. And that sucks. That's probably the worst thing. Like, I mean, it's not okay. It's not the worst thing. But, you know, when players don't play as a team and they all just kind of do their own thing, you know, like you've got the one cheese build who's just sitting like, in the like the previous encounter throwing you know like uh seekers over a wall and not actually with the team not helping the team really i hate that um when you've got you know teams that completely rely on just cheesing it you know like only thing they do is cheese the encounter every, like every encounter they just cheese 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 and you literally spend like three hours trying to complete a legendary i hate that right like just open the dang door right let the dps guys shoot you know like let let everyone you know do something don't you know like just having like everyone switch to like a cheese build just so you can throw like seeker mines or something like that or throw turrets like ev you know like once in a while it's fine but like every time you get into a match and like that's all people do oh my god it's awful and they don't realize that it's just taking longer to get through the mission you know like if they actually figured out how to do the mission properly they would be get through it they'd get through it in like half the time but no they want to cheese it every time and just take forever okay whatever um you know, like actually the, the most fun that I've had was actually with a group of people that didn't necessarily know how to cheese it. Yeah, they, they just ran straight up and, you know, jumped over the fence and we, you know, fought the enemies. Like, yeah, okay, it's at the end boss and we, we wiped the first time we did it, but it was still good. Like it was, it was a fun run that we went through and I actually enjoyed that mission uh, much more than all the other times that I encountered like people who just automatically cheese everything. Like that's just awful. I hate that. Um, but yeah, it's like the same thing. It's like, you know, like when you have to deal with somebody who like literally thinks they're a super tank and they can tank anything in the game and they just run out and get surrounded by the enemy while their teammates are just sitting in the back. Like, what, what are you supposed to do? Like, you know, the tank's job is not to just like go distract the enemies all the way across the map so no one can hit them. No, the tank's job is to sit there and soak up bullet damage so that your teammates can fire. Right. And if you're distracting the enemy all the way across the map and they can't actually be hit, then you're not doing your job. The second thing the tank's supposed to do is to be there to revive like team members who are in a bad position, right? Like as a tank build who can take damage, you can go after, you know, maybe maybe one of your teammates died in a in a, you know, poor position, right? No one has the reviver hive. So you can go over there and revive them. That's what a tank's job is. Playing a tank poorly, uh, it just is, is a pet peeve of mine that just angers the crap out of me. Do not play a tank poorly. Do not think that you, you're just a tank build and you're just going to go out there and just, eh, whatever. Like, you, you just screw up the whole dynamics of the entire team. That's basically it. But overall, like I, I do enjoy playing legendaries. You know, I, you don't need to be the best build. You don't need to be the best player. You don't need to be like the best group. You know, like it, it doesn't matter. Like I, I, you don't need a thousand shade. You, you just need to have a build that does something, right? Like, you accomplish something. Either that's DPS, that's 
tanking damage, that's healing, that's applying status effects, right? Like, if you have a build that does one of those four roles properly, then you contribute a lot to a team, whether you're the greatest or not, right? The second thing you need to know is just staying with the team, right? If you are not staying with the team, you're going out on your own, you're dying, you don't help the team at all. If you are at least near the team or in sight of the team, you know, like, not like 50 meters away from the team, you know, like, let's say you're maybe, okay, maybe you're a little bit back. You obviously want some separation because explosives can kill a lot of people. So having, uh, you know, like 10 meters, five meters of, of, of separation from players, fine. But you can still get into positions and revive players or support players. You know, maybe they're getting jumped. You can at least, you know, throw something at the, the incoming AI or shoot the incoming AI, stagger them, allow that person to, you know, like, get into a better position. Something, right? Being, you know, separated and not playing as a team is trash. So you don't need to be the best. You don't need to be godlike. You don't need to have the best build. You just need to have a build that does the job that it needs to do. Whether, you know, that's clearly defined as damage or, or status effects or tanking or repair or something, right? That way, like, the, the less confusing your build is, the easier it is for other people to know what you're going to be doing. So if you are running, like, a, a multifaceted, like, jack-of-all-trades build, like, a person who joins in as a status effect build may be like, okay, well, then no one else is running status effects, so I'm fine. Now you have two status effect builds. Or, you know, like, you're running a, a tanky DPS build, but then, like, so what is the tank supposed to think? What is the DPS build supposed to think? Well, like, should I go tank? Should I go DPS? Like, now you're creating confusing situations, right? So the less confusing your build is, the easier it is for your other teammates to be like, okay, I'll switch. Or, okay, I'll stay with this build. Because they know what to expect. And when you play properly, when you support your team, when you stay with your team, when you don't do something stupid, it's much easier for your team as a whole, right? If you see that, hey... No one else is running Jammer, and I know there's going to be a lot of freaking explosives, uh, explosive drones, and the uh, the drone operators are going to be, you know, everywhere in this part. Maybe I'll switch to the Jammer here. Like, fantastic. Great thinking. You know, like, if, if people don't do that, like, people just don't have, like, the basic concept of what should you do, like, that creates a bad environment for the team as a whole. Uh, the other thing is, like, you don't have to know how to cheese a mission, right? Like, don't focus on how to cheese a mission because then all you ever do is focus on how to cheese a mission. So what ends up happening when you get to a team who's like, I'm not cheesing this crap. Like I want to actually play it, you know, then you're, then you're dog shit. So don't focus on learning how to cheese a mission, focus on learning how to beat a mission and how to work as a team. Like it's just going to be more helpful to you. But anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was a bit of a longer one, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got maybe some helpful advice out of it and I will see you in the next one.